Your Honor, in the past two months, I have secured a residence. I've refurbished that residence and made it an environment fit for children. Those are your words. I'm also holding down a job as a shipping clerk. So I, I believe I met your requirements. I had a schedule. In regards to my behavior, I can only plead insanity. Because ever since my children were born, the moment I looked at them, I was crazy about them. Once I held them, I was hooked. I'm addicted to my children, sir. I love them with all my heart. And the idea of someone telling me I can't be with them, I can't see them every day, well, it's like someone saying I, I can't have air. I can't live without air and I, I can't live without them. Listen, I would do anything. I just wanted to be with them. You know, I need that, sir. We have a history. And I just... They mean everything to me, and they need me as much as I need them. So please, don't take my kids away from me. So you try and get your own kids after a divorce is almost impossible in the state of Ohio. And so that's something that I think we need to fix. People started coming to me and sharing their stories. And just to hear all the different stories and the similarities, a, a parent shouldn't have to spend ninety dollars to $100,000 to get their own kids. It was just good people that wanted to be good parents to their kids, but it was the court system or the attorneys or the ex-spouse that was putting roadblocks up. And to me, it makes absolutely no sense. It's, you know, when two parents are fighting over the kids, the kids lose. What I think the legal system fails to realize is that the way in which we handle marital uh, separation actually victimizes the children more. Research that's done in the U.S. and that's done uh, internationally and in other countries has consistently shown that children who have both parents equally involved in their lives when the parents live apart do better on every measure of child well-being, every metric of child well-being, than children who are raised in a sole custody situation. And, this is important, they do almost as well on all of those measures as children raised in intact families. And what this tells us is that the harms that children experience in divorce are not the harms of parental separation, they're the harms of parental deprivation. During the separation, during the divorce, during the alleged abuse, has led to absolutely no relationship with my oldest son anymore. Understand, this is not happening to just me. This affects 22 million Americans. If it wasn't for the system, I truly do believe that my ex and I could be functioning. We've set up a winner-loser situation, but in fact, everyone loses. I think it's very hard to make a decision on what's best for the kids when you don't know anybody. I think when you're looking at the standard parenting time every other weekend, um, you don't get to take your kids to school. You don't get to be involved in school events because you don't know about them maybe. Evening events, sporting events, taking them to, you know, getting them ready for practice after school, whatever it might be. There are so many things that happen during the week. Standard parenting time to me is just gross. Um, the it's so unfair, um, and, and I'm talking for mothers and fathers. I'm not. This is not a father conversation. This is about parents and their kids, um, and I think it's unfair to the kids. If if you have equal parenting times, they have two homes. Standard parenting times, they think they have a home, and then they're just coming to visit you. The legislature has a responsibility, given the overwhelming research that supports the presumption of shared parenting, the legislature has a responsibility to create for the courts a presumption, rebuttable of course, because shared parenting is not appropriate in all cases, but to create for the courts a presumption that shared parenting is in the best interest of children. Begin with equal shared parenting and move away from that when there are good reasons to move away from that. If we had 50-50 shared parenting from the time that we started down the road of divorce, I truly believe our divorce would not have taken as long as what it did, which was three years. And I truly believe the kids would be in a much better emotional state because we would still be having shared parenting at the moment and they wouldn't have missed out on parts of their life with their grandparents, their aunts and uncles, and with their parents in general, you know, with mom and dad. 
yeah, we shouldn't even need a law for this. You know, it's, it's sad that, you know, the, the country that we live in, we live in the freest country in the world, and, and we have to pass a law so both parents can raise their children equally. To me, that's very sad. It's common sense. But the only way that, that we can, that, that something's gonna happen is if we get a law passed, and unfortunately, it's to that point, and I'm glad we're, we're here in the state of Ohio.